And we're back, guys. Hey, it's Coach Carroll again here. <laughs> um, in case this meerkat looked a little bit like you in class, uh, this YouTube video might be a little helpful for you. So, here goes. <laughs> it's pretty funny when a teacher sees a student doing that. I have a hard time not laughing. Or maybe I just laugh. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, 3D vector problem, and it deals with dot product and uh, projection, or dot product uses, there is a projection. And, okay, so let's get started. What you have is a, is a bar that is fixed to the ground here at point O. At the end of the bar, there's a rope attached from point A to point B, and that rope is in tension. Okay, remember you, you, you can't push on a rope. So that's why they show the force vector here actually pulling at point A. Okay, and we're given the magnitude of this force or the, the magnitude of the tension in the rope to be 400 newtons. Part A simply asks us to write vector F in component form. Okay, now uh, hopefully you know that a vector you need two things to define it. You need the magnitude and the direction. Okay, well, we're given the magnitude, that's the 400 newtons there. Okay, so we know this. So how can we find the direction? If we can find the direction, then we can write the vector f in component form. Okay, because if you recall, you can write a vector in the form of its magnitude times a unit vector in, in the direction of the vector. So we know that the tension force is directed from A to B because those are the two points of connection for the rope. So in our case, we can write the force vector F as a product of the magnitude times a unit vector that goes from A to B, okay? So we have a coordinate system defined for us in the problem that whose, sorry, whose uh, origin centers at O. So I can find this unit vector from A to B because I know the position of point A and I know the position of point B. So to find a unit vector pointing from A to B, we can do that by finding a position vector from A to B and dividing it by its magnitude. Remember, a unit vector has a length of one, okay? So, if I want to find a position vector, this position vector R A B, let's, let's draw that vector here. So the position vector R A B is a position vector that starts at A and points down to B. That is R A B. Okay, so uh, a few ways to do this. The easiest way, I think, in for a problem where the positions are defined easily like this is to simply think, is to, to say, what if I start at point A and I want to travel down here to point B, but I can only go in either the X, Y, or Z direction. You can't go at some angle. Okay, so how would I, how would I get there? Which uh, directions would, would I go? So if I start at A, well, I see I'm going to have to go down this way. How many units? Six units. Then I'll have to come out in the positive y-axis, that would be a distance of one unit because point B is uh, five units over from the x-axis and point A is four units over, so the difference is one. And then I'll have to continue out in the x-direction for four units. So, let's go back to red here. That means I can define the position vector. So again, we went down six units right there in the z-direction. So start backwards here, that'll be a minus 6 k hat. And then we went out 1 in the y direction, positive y direction, 1 unit, or 1 meter. And then we had to go in the positive x direction, 4 meters there. So 4 i hat. Okay. Now that vector has units of meters. And then we divide that vector by the length of it, the magnitude of it. So 4 squared plus 1 squared plus 6 squared. And what are the units of this magnitude? It's also in meters. Okay. 
So now I can write the unit vector as 4 divided by, so this radical here comes out to be the square root of 53. Okay, so if I'm taking a vector divided by a scalar, you just divide each component of the vector by that scalar. Sorry, I forgot to write my j hat here. J hat, and then minus, don't forget the minus here. Okay, so minus 6 divided by square root of 53k hat. Now, are there any units here? Well, let's just look back how, how we found it. Remember, the position vector was in units of meters, and the magnitude of the position vector was also in meters, so those canceled. So, unit vector uh, has no units, it's unitless. Okay, so now that we have unit vector AB, then it's just a matter of writing down what we already know to write the force vector in component form. So the magnitude of the force is 400 times. Now, I'm just going to be a little bit lazy and just copy paste all that right there. Okay, and then the units of this vector will be in newtons. Now, the unit vector is unitless, but the magnitude 400 is in newtons. So there is your answer for part A. Okay. Now for part B, it asks to find the magnitude of the projected component of the force along pipe AO. And it's talking about this 400 Newton force. So what it's asking for, you, you see the force is directed from A to B, but it wants to know what amount of that force is actually directed from A to O here, okay? So if they ask you to find a projection, the mathematical way to find that is by using a dot product. A dot product is a projection. So if I want to find the projection of a vector onto an axis, so I want to find the projection of vector F onto which axis? Onto the axis A to O, onto that axis. Okay, to do that, I'm going to take the dot product of the vector dot a unit vector of the axis you're wanting to find the projection onto. Okay? Now, we already have, so, sorry, a, this is a dot product. Okay? So, a dot product, you dot two vectors, and what's the result here? The result is a scalar, and the result is not a vector, it's a scalar, so it will just be a number. Okay? So we already know, what do we know? We know this already, that's what we just found. So now we just need to find a unit vector in the direction from A to O. Okay? So to do the same thing as we previously did, the same steps there. I'm going to find a position vector from A to O and divide it by the magnitude. Okay, so if again, let's say I want to start at A and travel down to O, how do I get there? Well, excuse me, I'd go again down 6 in the Z direction, so I'd be a negative Z direction, and then I would travel in the negative Y direction, how many units? 4 units and I don't have to travel in the x direction at all because O is on the YZ plane as point A is. So I never left the YZ plane. So 0 I hat J hat was minus 4 and K hat is minus 6 K hat meters divided by the magnitude of that vector 4 squared plus 6 squared meters and I have the unit vector there. Okay, so this comes out to be minus 2 over radical 13 j hat and minus 3 over radical 13 13 there. Uh, let me write that better. K hat. Okay. 
So now I want to take the dot product of f dot u from o to a. I'm going to multiply the similar components and then add them all together. So I would take the x component of f and multiply it times the x component of the unit vector from o to a. Add that to the y component of vector f multiplied times the y component of the unit vector from O to A and the same for the Z there. Okay. So if you go through and you do that, we know the X component of F is 400 times 4 over radical 53 but what's the x component of the unit vector? x component of the unit vector is 0. Okay, so that one's gone. And then we'll have 400, what was it, 1 over the radical 53. There's F Y and now the Y component of the position or sorry, Y Y component of the unit vector is minus two with radical thirteen. And now I also need the Z component. So the Z component of the force vector is 400 times this negative 6 over radical 53. And the z component of the unit vector is negative 3 over 13. Now be careful with your signs here. Okay. There you go. So that whole sum is going to equal 244 newtons. So this force vector has a component of 244 newtons pushing down from O to A, actually pushing that bar O to A in compression. Okay? So that's how we find part B. We use the dot product there. Now how about part C? Part C asks to find the angle between the force vector F and the pipe AO. So they're actually looking for this vector here. What is that angle theta? Okay. So we can also use a dot product to do the same thing. Okay. Another way to calculate a dot product okay, is to actually take the magnitude of one vector. Let me just write it like this. Sorry about that. So let's say if I want to take A dot B. Another way to calculate that is to take the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle in between the vectors. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the angle in between the force vector F and the unit vector that goes from A to O. Okay? So for us, if we'll do the dot product of U from O to A. Well, I already know that answer right here to be 244, right? But how else can I calculate this 244? I can calculate it using this formula. So what's the magnitude of F? Magnitude of F is 400. What's the magnitude of a unit vector? Well, that's 1. And then I need the cosine of the angle in between them, and that's what I'm looking for. So right here is one equation and one unknown. I can go ahead and solve that for theta there. And do your calculator work. The theta comes out to be 52.4 degrees. Okay. So that wraps up this problem. Have a great day.